Since you clicked on this video and you're watching it at least for the next few seconds, I think it's safe to assume that you're interested in coffee, coffee subscriptions, or maybe something I have to say in these coffee opinion videos. And I think we all can agree that every coffee lover loves a mail day where there's a package and that package contains coffee. Of course, your level of excitement can vary from just ripping it open and straight into the grinder to maybe hanging out for the next couple hours until you wake up in the next morning and you make your coffee then. But regardless, we all love that feeling of fresh coffee deliveries, and the company Trade makes that very simple and easy. But hold on a second, hold on, slow down there, gym shoes, before you click off this video in the expectation that it's an advertisement for Trade Coffee, it's kind of the opposite. From a customer's perspective or the end user perspective of getting a bag of coffee, these types of third-party coffee subscriptions are great. They provide a service that gives you either curated options or maybe hand-picked options, and they also give you shipping discounts, but most importantly, they give you convenience. And if you don't believe me, you can look up customer reviews online, just like I did. But I think the term review can be kind of loose in this sense because the massive amounts of affiliate links and calls to action, they generally feel more like an advertisement or a click funnel than an actual review. But I think it's time we talk about Trade a little more in depth because I've seen them just pretty much everywhere for the last two years. So consider this video, I don't know. It's not a review, it's not an anti-review, it's not an expose, it's kind of this weird mishmash of things I've found, things I thought were interesting, things I thought people would be interested to know about Trade, their partners, and why I chose or choose not to work with Trade even as a creator who've been approached by Trade to do ads for them, but also as a customer of someone who's gonna buy coffee. And I'm gonna get into that. And the one angle of coffee subscriptions that is often overlooked or just generally unseen or maybe people are unaware of is the fact that those who are doing 99.9% .9 of the actual work, like those who are roasting, bagging, tagging, shipping the coffee, aren't really being paid a fair price. As a roaster myself and knowing many other roasters, I've had a lot of conversations around coffee subscriptions, but Trade is always at the top of that list. In fact, they're at the top of pretty much every list. From the top of Google search results, targeted ads, and massive influencer campaigns, they have no issues or trouble getting themselves in front of people. Now, what really led me down this path to being interested in looking into Trade was being reached out to by an agent about a year ago. And that agent just asked me to do a YouTube video if I was interested, and I declined. And the reason I declined was pretty simple. It was a conflict of interest for me as a coffee company owner to promote other coffee companies that just didn't make sense. But after I started seeing more and more advertising from them all over the place, I was curious. And so I kind of started to dig around a bit. And it quickly became pretty obvious that the reason I was seeing their ads everywhere was they had recently funded $9 million, and that was in 2020, and we all know what was happening in 2020. And they got that $9 million because, as we all know what was happening in 2020, that was forcing people to brew coffee at home. It became more of a necessity than actually a hobby. And this $9 million didn't just show up. It came from two distinct places. One was an investment firm called Madrona, which you likely haven't heard of. But they do invest in this nice little mom and pop shop called Amazon, which you probably have. And another portion of the funding came from another private investment firm, and one that we as coffee people may or may not have heard of. I had heard of them before, but they're called JAB, and they're based out of, I think, Luxembourg, Germany. And that company has their hands in a lot of different coffee. And as of 2019, they control about 12% of the whole world's coffee retail market. Within JAB's large umbrella is widely known coffee or coffee adjacent companies like Green Mountain, Keurig, and Panera, but also a few that fall straight into our happy place, into our specialty coffee realm like Portland's Stumptown and Chicago's Intelligentsia, and maybe in some cases, Pete's. Beyond that, JAB's history isn't squeaky clean by any means, and they didn't start out by wanting to be the biggest coffee conglomerate in the world, and they really aren't that. Actually, I think Nestle is bigger than them still, but that's besides the point. Basically, they started out and made the bulk of their fortune early on in the chemicals industry, and they recently unearthed some bad PR that, you know, the original founder maybe sort of kind of had some Nazi party ties during World War II. 
in fairness, they did put, I think, $30 million into a Holocaust fund. And honestly, I wouldn't want to be judged by my great-grandparents, my grandparents, or my parents' decisions. So that's just really some flavoring, just some background on what we're looking at with JAB. You can decide whether you think that's relevant to today or not, but that's just kind of how we're getting into the topic and doing a little background. So with all that background and all this stuff is all publicly available information, and I'll put links to all the articles and the things that I read and what I found when I was sleuthing around about trade and their investing partners, JAB and all that stuff. But what I really wanna do is focus down a bit more or more appropriately dial in this conversation as to why I personally would avoid trade. And the reason for that is they're middlemen and questionable middlemen at that. And yes, the coffee industry is full of middlemen, but I think that that transaction from the roaster, the person who roasts the green coffee into that brown deliciousness is the last transaction to the customer. And I kind of want to push towards that. And it wasn't until I spoke to a few roasters who actually give coffee to trade or work with trade that I was more curious about how they operate. On trade's website, they promote their roasters as being sustainable and community driven, which great, I'm sure a lot of them, if not most of them are, but I also feel like trade has nothing to do with that. I feel like they're copying their homework and it just makes it feel cheap. In the end, one question I just couldn't really get answered, at least with a very specific number or percentage, was how much trade pays per bag. I just know it's under wholesale. Which, in an industry like specialty coffee that's pushing more and more towards transparency, I'll be more apt to change my tone on trade if I knew how much they were taking out of that transaction, considering they're selling a bag of coffee for the same price they're selling it from the roaster. So as we've already established, they're paying less than wholesale. And after you add in all of the roaster's expenses from running the roaster, the electricity, the gas, running a cafe, actually bagging the coffee with the labor and all that stuff, the margins are pretty thin. But there is a silver lining here. Of course, no one's being forced to be on trade, so they must be getting something from this. And basically the only thing I've gotten out of the roasters I talked to in terms of the benefits is nationwide recognition and their aggressive advertising campaigns. But for me, this just creates more questions than it does answers, because if you're getting nationwide exposure, you would think you're maybe getting some people to come in and buy direct from you instead of going through the middleman of trade, which if you ask trade or look at their actual marketing, they say they have a 90% subscription retention, which is pretty high. So that to me means not that many people are coming off of trade to order direct from roasters. Admittedly, yes, we did take the scenic route to get to this point, but this in my mind is the main problem with trade and likely other third-party subscription services. Of course, I don't have these roasters accounting and I can't say what the numbers are from trade and without trade, but my guess is based on what I know, I'm sure they would probably rather you buy direct or get a subscription through them as opposed to going through the middleman of trade and maybe shipping a couple bags to you every other month or something. And they have 40 plus really high quality roasters that honestly make good coffee. And I've had most of these roasters before. So I'm not trying to demonize them for trying to grow their business or expand their marketing. And from a customer's perspective, I know how difficult it can be to navigate the world of specialty coffee. There's so many options, so much stuff going on, and when you just have to do a few clicks to come up with a coffee that you most likely will like, it just sort of makes sense. And I don't blame anyone for being a trade subscriber. And I know that maybe I'm bringing up a lot of problems, but not really bringing any solutions to the table. So let me do that also. I think if you're actually on a subscription, I don't think you should be demonized for that. I think it's obviously a good way to come into contact with lots of good copies, lots of good roasters, and the options for that maybe are difficult to find if you're new to the scene. So use the subscription service more as a temporary help to help you collect a few different roasters here and there, and then consider canceling and maybe ordering direct from them, getting their subscription services on like staggered weeks or something like that. But there are also lots of coffee bloggers and coffee reviewers out there always tasting different coffees, maybe find one that has similar matches to you in terms of what you like, and follow them and maybe pick up bags direct from roasters that they recommend. Someone like Wallace Coffee, for instance, comes to mind, where he's always trying new and unique coffees, and he may be a great source for that kind of information. And lastly, if there was enough interest, maybe we could come up with some kind of crowdsource review and recommendation system that we put on Discord or some forum or something like that. 
In the end, I just want to connect roasters to coffee lovers without giving so much money to these massive business conglomerates that are basically just giving lip service to third wave coffee buzzwords like sustainability and community while actually working antithetical against all those things and the values that the specialty coffee industry was built on. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this rant here. And I hope y'all at least found this interesting. Of course, drop any comments or questions you have about trade, third-party coffee subscriptions, or anything else coffee-related in the comment section down below, and I'll see y'all next week. Okay, bonus content for those who stick around to the end of the video, the ride or die Prometheus watchers. This is a funny story, or maybe not, but Onyx Coffee Lab, who is on trade as a partner, actually did a meme or a joke back in 2018, I think, on their Instagram, I'll have to dig it back up, but they did a joke that they had sold to JAB. And the whole joke was most people in the industry kind of knew that JAB was bad news, but now they're actually selling coffee through JAB via trade. I believe it was the great philosopher uh, Morissette who once said, isn't it ironic? <laughs>